Hello and welcome to the Coding the Gurus Grometer edition. We are entering a streamer into the Grometer. We know it can be done because we already put one Hassan Piker through yep. the apparatus. And uh, just looking back, he might kind of mid mid score 64 around there, 64 as converted to a percentage point. You know, yeah, not yeah. the bottom, not the top. Let's see how his rival destiny fares. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, it's a shame we don't have our candidate barometer inclusion, moral grandstanding. Well, um, we could. Yet. Why do? Why can't we? Ma- we are the masters of. Are we, are, we allow- <laughs> are we allowed? Is that even allowed? <laughs> we are the masters of the chromatic. We could do that if we wanted, couldn't we? Look, I've there's just... even an extra column. You've just, oh, yeah, you've made it. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it. I've done it. Moral grandstanding is now that. Now, I, I do realize in so doing this, there's now no entries for the people above, but that's fine. We'll, uh, that's fine. So we won't use it to calculate the score, but we'll, uh, we'll do it now. Cause... We, what day if we feel... Excited. Yeah, we can we go can. back and refill them all, yeah. but we'll we'll record it for now, Matt. That's what we'll we'll do from here on in. But, I agree that it's it's relevant, and it is something that could go one to five rather than on off, right? It's it's a very core oh, component. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I think it's core. Cool. Yeah, um, we'll talk about that in the next uh, supplementary materials. That's right. Um, so to remind people what we do here, we have. 10, now possibly 11 features that we've identified, which are very consistently represented across the secular guru community. Are, so we rank people on each of these features from one to five and then tally up a score at the end. And um, this is how far they accord to the secular guru template, but also to note that the grometer does encode most of the worst characteristics about secular gurus. So a high score is not good generally, but a low score does not mean that you are not a secular guru. It just means you're kind of not a toxic one or don't fit to that template particularly well. So you could yeah. be and a low score, like a bad... And a low score, and a low score <laughs> doesn't mean we like you. Uh, yeah, this is good because like... again, I, I, I feel... I always emphasize this, but um, Dave Rubin, somebody that we strongly did not like, um, managed to score a, for you, there's Dave Rubin, um, just 60%, okay? So mid-level. Yeah, Yeah. Dasha and Anna from Red Scare, what's the base score? Not big fans of them. Either no, and they scored thirty no. percent and twenty eight percent for me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. There you Good. go. There you go. Just this a reminder. Is, this is a point we'll just endlessly have to repeat because it never <laughs> ever. Tell, uh, go tell your friends on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, go tell you. Spread the word. Exactly. <laughs> spread the word. Spread the word. Spread the word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the first characteristic is galaxy brainness. So, willingness to voice opinions and theories across a broad constellation of topics, linking things together, exerting mm. your strong opinions in fields which you hold no relevant mm. expertise. Mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, yeah. Look, I think there's two there's two parts of Galaxy Brain. This, Chris. Like one of them is that willingness to, um, you know, tread very broadly across yep. lots of different topics but then there's the other aspect which is like you know you've got this sort of unique theory like evolutionary biology which is the, the, the sort of key that helps you understand every single one of them um and professing to be kind of have, having figured it out basically isn't that um, but, more first principles revolutionary theories because i feel like no, the it's... galaxy brain this is more claimed polymathic ability yeah that's right but I, I think for that reason... But you don't need a theory, an individual theory, a mono theory to be a claimed polymath. In fact, in some respects, 
you might be better off not having one because you need to go dancing across so many different disciplines. Galaxy brainness and revolutionary theories has always been a little bit muddled in my in I your think. mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually in a talk I gave about this subject matter, I retitled Galaxy brainness to um, stated polymathic ability or something like that, like. Uh, uh, you know, claim poly, polymathic poly, ability. Polymathery. I like Polyma that. Yeah, I made it more um, pseudo profound <laughs> by giving yeah. it a, a, you know, an academic thing and then said, aka Galaxy Brainness. So um, I've defined it, Matt, in the academic just, sphere yeah. already. I did yeah, it. <laughs> but it just doesn't, it doesn't look, but the point is, it doesn't fit with the name, which is. I know, you know, I know so, that's the most important explain. thing. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. The meme, the meme is the real definition, Chris. Everything else is downstream of that. Sometimes oh, people right. accuse us of being long-winded, Matt, but they're wrong. <laughs> they're wrong. I don't know what they're so talking wrong. about. So, so very, very wrong. On one to five on Galaxy Brainness, however you define it, where would you put Destiny? Should I remind you of your Hassan Piker score, or would that be uh, uh, forcing no, no, I you? I can see it. I can see it. No, I'm, I'm not going to grade him relative to Hassan. Um, sorry to be more long-winded. Uh, I'm I'm rereading. I'm rereading our thing about galaxy brainness. But it it really, I mean, it is a bit muddled, our description of it. Um, like as well as polymathry, there's a bunch of other stuff that is written there, which is, um, you know, it's about profundity. You know what I mean? Ideas that are too profound for an average mind to comprehend, um, alluding to their own accomplishments and exaggerating their expertise to a shameless degree. So my point is, Chris, it's not just, oh, this person talks about lots of different things. It is... It's it's a bit vague and a bit of a fuzzily described. Uh, well, yeah. So, thing, like Yuval it's... Noah Harari scored four from both of us last time, and he talks about a bunch of different topics, but he also presents it in a, you know, this is going to blow your mind way, right? You know, oh, all all mm. things are fictions, man. Like, yeah. that's you know, so that is why he falls into that high score. Um, yeah. I, I so yeah so just reminding myself of that definition it's more than just talking about a bunch of different topics it's actually okay to talk about lots of different topics like it some, is if you talk about them responsibly people. yeah exactly and I so I'm just not going to rate Destiny high on this one even though he he is a you know he, he's like a Swiss Army you know if we described him as um he, you know he he reads Wikipedia and he, he does this sort of basic research and then dives into various different topics but he sort of dives into them. It, to my mind, in the frame of a, an informed, a, you know, a somewhat informed layperson, you know, yeah. he he may he may argue his corner extremely aggressively and forcefully, but that that's what I perceive him to be doing. So, would you agree? Uh, yeah, although I've seen him on occasion issue like hot takes about topics that he's just come across, right? And uh, like, I mean... Like, does he claim to have read like a hundred books or a thousand books of no, climate he doesn't. change like Jordan Peterson? He does not. He just claims to have been there when the wiki was written or, <laughs> or those kind of things or to know all the memes. So, yes, he's <laughs> not as pretentious about all that. I think he's pretty upfront. Yep. I mean, he has research right. streams, right? But yeah. I still, yeah. I have to... Okay. I'm going to give him yeah. one point for, for, for being, for, for talking about everything, basically. I'm going to um, give him, the, I'm going to score him free because I think this is one of the features where he is most, he doesn't claim, so he doesn't get the high score because he's not claiming like polymathic uh, expertise and he doesn't have, you know, these very profound theories of all these different topics. But I, I feel he's just got a willingness to, kind of just dive across all different topics and sometimes with unwarranted confidence Cultures. and then the defensiveness mm -hmm. around like take so it's not it's not exactly in line that's why he's round about the middle and okay. slightly above right. the that's, middle that's fine well I've given him a two so that will average out uh, cultishness Chris mm, well this is a tricky one right because 
this is one of the main accusations, criticisms leveled at them is the per cult of personality, uh, you know, generated around him and the Taliban community that exists. And um, we certainly saw mm. a lot of cases of parasocial, unhealthy parasocial dynamics. <laughs> no uh, doubt. We, def we definitely saw that. So uh, a little question for you, Chris. Why do they love him so much? I mean, he doesn't present himself as a loving character. He doesn't. He doesn't sort of flatter or tell his audience that he loves them like some of our gurus do. But no. yet, you're right. They do seem incredibly um, loyal. So, well, why is that? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, it depends on who you're asking about. If you're asking about the orbiters, I think, as you mentioned, there is an element of, you know, people seeking out the the kind Attracted of. To yeah, the, 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 he has a big audience and he's willing to talk to people and these, you know, like the, there's a lot of, you know, they're just dramatic people as as well. But um, so there's there's that. Uh, the, Destiny is a bit of a celebrity in the streamer sphere. But so, if you're talking... So, so to, to, just before you move on, so that first aspect is less like a cult and more like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> is it? Multi <laughs> yeah, like multi I, I, it's like multi it's like multi level marketing. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a there's a bit of a there's yeah, a, but the you, difference you, is with like multi the, top. the reason why I don't think it entirely holds is because like well, I guess this is the point with some people get to the top, right? Like Bosch or Hassan or various other yeah, yeah. orbiters. You if know, you, they if you shoot if off, you grind uh, away. If you grind away and you, you do your stint, you can work your way up to the top. top and before but the you know difference it, you're a is multi-level marketing never, <laughs> like, it doesn't work, does it, really, for Oh, it works anyone. for some people. Yeah, it works for Only some people. Only the most exploitative, well, I so I see the, <laughs> I see <Yeah>. the potential <laughs> analogy, but yeah, so I, yeah, so there's that with his orbiters, but in terms of, like, the, the Taliban community. Yeah. I yeah, think one fans. issue is, and we didn't actually talk about this in the episode, but it, I believe it's true from surveys that uh, Destiny community members, or maybe Destiny himself has done, but I, I actually, I, I saw this in, I believe it was the Mr. Girl document, and Mr. Girl, good God, Matt, <laughs> a horror show. So we can't really trust anything that he says, because just, uh, but um, in any case, he was reporting on the demographics of the Destiny community. I think you can trust, you know, that was a second time report on that. And it was mentioned that a lot of people are young, you know, which would you would expect with streaming. But I think in some respects, there is, you know, with the same kind of hero worship that you see in the Red Pill community towards people that are giving a narrative to wayward youngsters or whatever, the same way, you know, Destiny, people come across him, they find his content entertaining and his debates impressive. And then I think, you know, that they, if you were like 15 to 20 and you'd consumed a bunch of Destiny's content, that you would have an attachment to him. Um, and if you were active in the community and so on. So, yeah. Okay. But yeah, so, so in the same way that, that they look up, people look up to Jordan Peterson. Exactly. Same, yeah, same, exactly same the same person. thing. Uh, Jordan Peterson um, does encourage cultish devotion amongst his followers, right? So, the, I mean, that's he's constantly telling people that he loves them and that he's, you know, getting emotional, crying about the, the thought of them suffering. Destiny doesn't do that, right? Like, he's, <laughs> he's pretty open that he, you know, about what he cares about and what he doesn't care about and what's likely to happen. If you know you're going on streams and stuff with them, so it's it is interesting because I think it's undeniable that there can be you know the potential for such a big community and such a community mm. focused on one individual. It it is almost yeah. invariably develops like yeah. you know sort of cultish admiration dynamics, but you can cultivate that more strongly or less strongly, and I mm. think current destiny which is the only destiny that i've been exposed to the material that i don't think he's leaning into that too hard he does do you know the audience chastising and he does you know like kind of monitor boundaries it's very clear yeah. there are particular yeah. enemies 
and whatnot, but it's it's not up at the tip toppy mm. way no, I, that I is. What, I, I understand what you're saying, which is that the cultish dynamics are absolutely there. The the sort of way he handles his followers does, you know, can sometimes contribute to a bit, but to a large degree, it's due to the, the streaming platform, right? He, it's it, the the nature of it is is that you have thousands of people focused in on the him chat, yeah, for hours. That's right, for hours, like looking at him, listening to him, and interacting him with the chat. So that like that format, like if if you are if you are a streamer doing working within that format. And and you become super famous or become have a big following, then it's almost inevitable. So so where to put him? I mean, I, I've got to put him mid to mid to I'm gonna upper put him mid, mid to upper mid, like three point five. Uh, yeah, is I was where thinking I exactly three point five as well. Hassan got five. <laughs> Sorry, Hassan. Did he? Um, Did he? I know I gave him four. I I gave I only gave for some four. So for me, not not that different. Just other different answer. um in terms of anti-establishmentarianism this is not about just being anti-establishment but more being reflexively anti-establishment and presenting yourself as a uh you know perpetual contrarian against the establishment that is trying to silence you and so on and i don't think he does that because if anything he gets accused of you know too much dogmatically writing, you know, a neoliberal, uh, like milk toast line, except Matt, that he does stick out takes like the Kyle Rittenhouse position that he had, which caused him trouble or the trihex N word controversy and all that. So, but that's not really anti. What, what, what was his take on Kyle Rittenhouse? Ah, essentially that, you know, he was going to be acquitted and that the, uh, a lot of the way that it was presented in the left wing media was inaccurate. Like it was, he he wasn't saying that like Kyle Rittenhouse is a good guy and he you know was very responsible in what he did, but just that like there were reasons why he went to the community that he did, and it did appear that he acted in a way that you know was likely to be viewed as self defense in the American legal system which it was, right? And he got off because the guy had a gun pointed <laughs> at him uh, whenever he the he, he shot and, you know, he was hit with the skateboard and all that kind of thing. So he was basically saying that the left-wing media presented it as, um, you know, that Kyle Rittenhouse is obviously guilty, obviously, um, you know, traveled across yeah. to kill protesters yeah. on that night yeah. and he yeah. was saying it turned out not to be true you may, may well be a complete idiot foolish irresponsible idiot but it, yeah not, yeah yeah no fine um okay uh so look no i don't think he's anti-establishment at all really um so i mean that's one reason why um leftists don't like him so <laughs> i'll give, give it i'll give it two just because i think there are some <laughs> just always might have to go one higher than you just because you do, don't you I think there are some aspects which can be uh, contrarian tendencies, but he's not very strong. So yeah, it's well, a it's a low two. I think of it right like yeah. that. I think green contrarian, contrarian. He, be, being a bit contrarian or heterodox, whatever you want to call it. That's not that's not Tough. saying that things. It's my grade, okay? Two. You no. give him one, I give him two. <laughs> um, <laughs> grievance right, mongering. Well. Ah. This is quite high, isn't it? Like, I mean, he's got, like, maybe this is a perpetual thing with, with streamers, but, like, he's got a list of enemies, and he's got a, a, uh, an entire format which is dedicated around, is the relationship going to deteriorate or repair? He has people writing manifestos about him and counter-manifestos, which he has to write, okay. you know. Okay, so so I just want to point out, Chris, one thing that's happened over the months and years is that you have gradually more and more thought about this grievance thing as being a proclivity to have few list of enemies. And enemies and things like that, which... No, no, no. You know, that's fine. Everyone perceives things differently. But I'll just remind you that the, the original concept was kind of related to the literature on conspiracy theories where we're having a personal sense of grievance, right? That you've been hard done by in your life, 
that the things mm. are unfair, society's been unfair to you, and also inculcating a similar kind of, you know, red pill or incel type grievance in your followers um, <laughs> and appealing to that. that. That was always how I understood Not, grievance right. buggering. And so, you extended it to be... No, no, okay, no, I've got no. a grievance against this person and that person and that no, person. No, 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 no. See, the problem here, <laughs> allow me to correct your misunderstanding about grievance smuggling. So you are correct that it, the concept relates to like the propensity to see yourself as the victim of a whole bunch of plots and, you know, the all of the universities and academic institutions, whatever, they're all aligned against you. Evil forces are out there and you're at the center of the story, right? It's all you being forwarded or attempted to be forwarded by the forces that be. But people that experience that almost always carry around with them a list of enemies that have done them wrong and they can name them they will mention them often in like unrelated content and it is true that the two things what, are what you're describing that what you're describing is like just a disagreeable person no i'm not <laughs> i'm not i'll give you an illustration of it so graham hancock went on with rogan recently and his opponent in the debate flint Dibble, was giving a presentation about archaeology and you know all those kind of things uh graham hunk Hancock's presentation was about how Flint, Flint Dibble and other people had misrepresented them on Twitter, had said mean things, had given quotes that were disparaging. So his whole presentation was, look, this person said this about me in this context, and this was very mean, and this is blah, blah, blah. That is grievance mongering to me. It's like the kind of thing that normally, yes, people have, you know, people that they're annoyed with in their life, but they're not going to give a presentation of what their enemies have said about them that they find unfair. Um, and in that respect, Destiny will give a presentation, a detailed presentation about like what people have done that is unfair to him. And he is very aware of the times he's being mistreated. Now, he might have some legitimacy to various claims. Like I found him pretty convincing when he was relitigating that conversation that he had about, you know, the, the whole M word to be on that podcast. But I, I take grievance mongering in part, not fully to be about that proclivity to like, uh, monger grievances, yep. like the title of the thing says with, with individuals. Yeah. With individual people. Um, okay, well, I mean, I'll be could be flexible now. I'm sure it's a component. I I would um I, I would see this grievance mongering as having three aspects. Oh, right? you want to add on? <laughs> no, no, it's got three sub facets. Oh, okay, sub facets. Right? Go right. ahead. I mean, it it it's really just what we've talked about, right? So one, I'll grant you. Let's 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 concede that having individual um, beefs. With yeah. people feeling, you know, having enemies, all that stuff, like Richard Nixon, you know, you're going on, you're going on my list, sort of thing. Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but then there, there are two other ones, right? One of them is 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 indulging in that narrative that that the um, that the nefarious forces, like the WEF or the institutions or or whatever, have have they're trying um, to silence you, or, or, or yeah, or society at large, right? Has has done you wrong, right? So, so with with say Brett and Eric Weinstein and their that narrative about how they've been personally thwarted in their professional lives, right? It's not it's not fixated on on individual bad people, right? It's it's the it's 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 everything, right? It's it's the whole system, right? Well, the system, it's, it's the both. system is set up to exclude. Yeah, I, I'm not excluding the first one. Right? It's number one. I'm okay, thing, okay, right? fine. You're just saying that <laughs> right. in addition to that, a, because yes, there addition. are named individuals that are villains in the Weinsteinian yeah. pantheon. Yeah, of course, right? Like like Fauci gets is a figurehead, right? But Fauci, yeah. you know, it's not about Fauci, right? He he represents a vague conspiratorial, institutional, oppressive something. Right? Okay. To, to to all these people, right? Okay. Three so, foundations so that, that I already knew about. So that's the yeah, I, 
No, I'm just summarizing it, right? So, but 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 both of these are personal, right? Like for, for, mm-hmm. for the guru, right? It, it's it's their own personal story. Mm-hmm. Third one is actually appealing to and inculcating. A, oh right, a, a I see what you want to do. In your followers, right? <laughs> this is what they took from us, right? Fine. That's that's the third thing. Three okay. things, Chris. Right. Okay, I agree with that. Yeah, I didn't think about that, but I agree. And in this case, I think that streamers do also do that because they're kind of telling their, you know, they're complaining to their listeners about the same villains <laughs> week in and week out, and so they, they all of the audiences know all the people that have mistreated you and uh, uh, so on. So I'm going to give Destiny a four. I'm, I apologize, but that's where it's going. Grievance mongering four. What are you going to give him? I'm going to give him a two. Oh. Because he only ticks one of those three boxes. I think, well, yeah, but he ticks it quite hard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big tick, sure. Yeah. Self-aggrandizement. Now, I see the un- un- <laughs> the uneducated critic of Destiny will say self-aggrandizement five. Narcissistic fucker thinks he's God's gift to uh, humanity and knows everything from reading a Wikipedia article. I don't get that impression, to be honest. I feel he has a a relatively accurate understanding of his level of knowledge and he's just confident about his ability to kind of present what he knows more effectively than other people and stuff so i so i can give him you know a midpoint yeah. score for no. galaxy bring this but on self-aggrandizement i think it's low i say yeah i no i agree with you i mean we we heard him uh talk frankly about what he thinks he's good at which is basically doing basic research remembering facts and putting them all together in an argument on the fly. Which he is to good have, at. To, 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 to debate. And he is good at those things. And he said, but he's, he doesn't know about a bunch of other things. Remember, he was complaining about academics should yeah. should should engage more in, and learn his skills because 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 he thinks they know things that he don't. He doesn't. Um, yeah, which so, is something yeah, we I mean, almost never hear. <laughs> no, I've never. It's, you don't hear that often. Um, everyone's an expert on every crisis that comes along in the in the news cycle, right? Yeah. Um, so, but he's not Sean Carroll, is he? Sean Carroll was a he's one. Not, he's not that Sean careful. Carroll's a one. No, no. I mean, like he is extremely confident, you know, mm. and and he's not he's not afraid to 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 go to battle with the army he has, right? Um, in terms of what he knows, maybe overly confident. So. I'll give him. I, I'm. I got to give him a two. I'm giving give him two. two. I, Your yeah. correct score there. Um, <laughs> Cassandra <laughs> complex warning about the dangers in the future. See now uh, here, just to point out as well, he doesn't really do that, does he? He's no. not remember, warning. Remember we saw. Remember we saw with the recent news story and Iran firing all the missiles. Yeah. That thing, like the Hassan. Well, uh, World War Three is about to kick off, and some other right, some right wing idiot. Same story. Yeah. World War Three is going to kick off, and I mean, uh, it, you know, Iran did retaliate, but it was an extremely measured retaliation, and they're sending all the diplomatic signals that both of them do not want a full scale conflict. Right, and, and Destiny, uh, he was, said Destiny that. was fundamentally correct, and he said that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. I think Why that did we give Hassan perfect. such a low score? I guess he didn't do it in the content we looked at, but he only got two from yeah. both of us. Probably just couldn't. Yeah. We sh- actually, I want to bump him up post hoc because after his World War Three thing. I mean, that's that was. I think I agree. I'm gonna give him, gonna give him yeah. three. Yep. Yeah. Give him three. I, I um, agree. We can do that. We're allowed to do that. We are the masters <laughs> yeah. of the karometer. Okay. <laughs> so don't. Yeah, uh, we can we can rescore That's and allowed. adjust scores. That's allowed. That's allowed. Yep. Um, That's allowed. Especially in this case, new information has new information has come to light, Chris. Uh, yeah. Also, in the manual, it says as long as the decoding is within one month, you don't need to rescore all the other attributes. If you try to go back farther, you're fiddling with things. But one month, it's it's all good. It's the edit okay. window. Um, revolutionary um, theories. 
Revolutionary uh, I'd give, theories. I'm giving you a, a one for Cassandra Complex. I didn't. I give him a one. Sorry, I should say as well. Um, mm -hmm. I'm also going to give him a one for Revolutionary Theories. Yeah, yeah. We gave him we gave him a couple of marks for the Galaxy Brainers, but not the Revolutionary Theories. He doesn't. Yeah, like I he said, has I jokey mean, theories. A, like he, yeah. I think he makes you know stuff in his manifestos like, and stuff, but he's like, not. What 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 do we give Joe Rogan for revolutionary theories? I mean, I, he's very different from Joe Rogan, but in this Joe sense, Rogan is constantly advancing. Oh, uh, well, no, so it, yeah, I, it's maybe the way to Dang. put it is. There's, yeah, I give Joe Rogan four, which is true. But do you remember, Matt, when we listen to Joe Rogan's content, he is not just regurgitating. He is saying, you know. He, he he has built them all together in his head about weak-willed people, man. They just, you know, they're yeah. scared of the vaccine because they're not strong enough and they want to tear down us like alpha yeah, male. But, yeah, but he's got revolutionary theories like your drunk uncle has got revolutionary theories, right? He does. What did you give him? You must have given him high as well. You've just forgotten. You see? I've forgotten. You, well, you give him a three. Okay, I give him a four. You were slightly wrong, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, shit. it's all right at uh, them it's all right it's all right hunter okay, points we I'll, give a one give on this as well which is similar yeah i, right? I, I, I got it yeah, i'm giving him one i'm i'm, I'm comfortable with that pseudo performing bullshit one one sorry no. just no. like this is dressing up your mundane points and fancy language and technical jargon to look more profound and he doesn't do that as Matt said, he's Martin Luther talking about the farting pigs. <laughs> That's what he's. <laughs> yep, he's about. Yep. Okay. Retards um, and cum. <laughs> <laughs> That's. Yeah. Yeah. Not that, not that we condone that kind of thing, but it isn't pseudo profound bullshit. It's, no. it's a different kind of scatological language, but. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And can uh, I just say here, Matt? This, I mean, probably I'll need to say this again on the supplementary materials, but I can say things more than once. But I'll just point out that um, there were a couple of people asking about, like, because we mentioned the Red Scare people say the like retard, right, as well. And we n indicated that that was performative, whereas we didn't get the same impression from Destiny. And people, like, in part took the, us to saying, and therefore it's fine. And to be clear, we're not saying, Oh, there for it's fine. You can be, you can have the exact same criticisms for like using that language that people raise all the time, right? And whatever, whatever your position on that is, it's fine to like think that Destiny is an ass for using it um, when he knows those arguments because he will have heard them um, as well. But the difference is that like the Red Scare people, the impression I get is that they are doing it in order to make you understand that oh, they're transgressive you can, yeah you, you can see the little spark and the little giggle yeah uh, when, when, when they, they do it yeah it's they're just and, constant... and, you know, and to be clear that was the thing about it that annoyed me i'm actually personally not much offended by bad words right yeah um, and uh yeah so i mean but it's but, not to say i you know i endorse it either it's just no no but i'm i want to make the distinction that basically with destiny it's more like in a way it, it, it's like an evolutionary process where that was probably the, the same origin for the term coming into gamer culture, right? In part, also, the word was just, like, in common usage there. But also, people were saying edgy things in gamer chats, you know, since the internet began. That has been part there. And now, that is kind of, like, it's still in the uh, culture. Yes, some people pointed out, ah, but you do get critics. You get people who are kicked off from tournaments and stuff for you know, saying fag or something like that. And I'm, it's like, yes, things have changed, but underneath, there is still a very, very active core of people using that kind of language and such that it is the kind of gamer culture. It is. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter whether or not you approve of it. It is, it is there. And so when Destiny is using it, it is kind of authentic to gamer culture right now so that's that's the only point that like i don't feel like when he's saying that that he's constantly like smirking to himself that you know he's transgressive but it's more that he assumes that everybody will be fine with him saying that when he's talking on stream and if you're not you're like a triggered liptard or you know whatever the case might be yeah. so yeah yeah I get it. 
Yeah. Uh, that distinction. Yeah. I just want to yeah, make it clear because I understand it's the same, but I don't think it's an inconsistency of our charity. It's just the the kind of usage having a different purpose although the same form. Um, <laughs> okay. Conspiracy mongering. Mm-mm. Didn't hear it. Haven't heard any of it. I've heard him, as I mentioned, like, you know, kind of quick, somewhat quick to accept some proposed conspiracies about the way the Palestinians are acting, which, you know, uh, kind of deliberately creating scenes that will garner them sympathy and whatnot, but no more so than uh, ordinary people or, you know, I and actually in general, I think he's more skeptical than ordinary people. So the fact that somebody would hear a conspiracy theory and like kind of endorse it or or in, and without looking into it first or whatever, right, because of their political bias. Yeah. It's not that sadly un- it's pretty normal. Yeah. Yeah, um, it is normal. So not um, not everyone could be like you and me, Chris. Just no, um, this is true. logical machines. So but I, yeah, I don't think he really promotes conspiracies or that the kind of thing. But this is not to say he will never just to be clear. This is not to say he will never promote a conspiracy theory or believe a conspiracy theory. It's does he engage in conspiracy mongering? Mongering, yeah. right? That's the the crucial yeah. qualifier here. And I think the answer is no. In comparison yeah. to Hassan, yeah. who does constantly uh, yeah. you know, imply that people are lying and the thing and so on. So or Eric Weinstein or any number of them. So Joe Rogan. Yeah, he's won. He's won on this for me. Uh, profiteering. Mm, now, I, so, it's, this is the the one that's always tricky because Destin is exceedingly wealthy and he's a millionaire and he's got huge amounts of income streams and so on and he, he like, so like Hassan, he has merch, he has various, uh, you know, different avenues of revenue that it, but profiteering is like this kind of hyper capitalist fixation doing things which are against your presentation or which seem like opportunistic and excessive right and like kind of bilking yeah. your like audience he, yeah like you said he doesn't like he he gets money from from well-defined income streams that he is very upfront about. He, what he he mentions the things that he doesn't do. He doesn't get money from various sources and so on. Chris, does he like does he what sort of sponsorships or advertising does he? He doesn't get have? that many sponsorships. He has yeah. I'd like so he basically was a Twitch streamer. That was his primary platform, and then he got banned from Twitch because of some the answers. I, it was unclear, but potentially related to statements he made about trans stuff. Um, which were were kind of like during a period where there was a big, you know, like uh, social media uh, frenzy around mm-hmm. that topic. And then he got flagged up and was removed from that platform, which was his primary platform. Now he streams on a bunch of different platforms um, and is a bit more diversified in his revenue streams, you could, you could say. But uh, so most of his stuff comes from, I think, memberships and advertise you know just like youtube ad revenue or oh, like, like uh, YouTube, kick revenue, YouTube revenue like, where it's, it's not an endorsement it's just youtube inserts the ads like they do right on and our, subs- each, subscription yes. uh stuff like on the streaming things you know where people can send money to have their message read or that kind of stuff which is just how streams work yeah so yeah yeah like the thing that gets me a little bit here is that i feel destiny is up front about like he's gonna do various things to you know make money and he's got you know like he he does prioritize things that will work out financially for him like like many people do right but it, it, part of the bit that makes him like a bit more immune I think is like he's upfront about it so he's he's yeah. saying you know we've got this this is what you get for that in return and he's he's not really doing much that I find out to do ordinary for a streamer. Now, yeah. people will say, well, but Hassan, uh, you know, he is 
also a streamer, so you don't have a merch store and all that kind of thing is different. But the point a bit here is that Hassan presents himself as not being motivated by various things like that. And very much, you know, he's he lives very frugally. He's giving money, donating money to friends and family. He's, you know, do, donating to charitable... Co- it's not about the profit. And then he has these, like, hyper capitalist elements to what you know like he's selling and and so on like yeah. so that's part of the distinction right and um, yeah. um so could destiny yeah, cash is in but not yeah not but to it up, but it up. yeah it's hard to find what's wrong with that i mean this goes to the heart of the distinction between grifting and just making money successfully right? yeah um, like, like you, you can say, I've written a book. Here's my book. Would you like to buy my book? It costs thirty dollars or something, right? You can yeah. be, you could be like Penn and Teller. You could be an entertainer. You used to go, you come to our show, and it'll cost you eighty dollars for a for a ticket. And you can be a successful entertainer or an unsuccessful one, a successful writer or an unsuccessful one. Same as being a broadcaster. But the key thing, I guess, is is why we don't see any element of grifting in in it. In a, in a normal entertainer or a normal author is that the monetization is completely upfront. Um, you you get what you pay for type type thing. The the stuff around grifting, which is you're you're, you're aggressively trying to use the slightly underhand or slightly um, yeah misrepresenting what it is you're doing, and that's why I think endorsements like sponsorships and endorsements of products like AG One are particularly you know a red mm. flag there because it is it is it is you know it's just a little bit it's using your, your personal authority to to make money in in in, in a way that it, yeah anyway it's hard to explain but i <laughs> i feel like it's clear to me well um, no look i i can you, i you think know one way that it. can help it out is you scored elon musk a one on this I scored him a free, right? So it's a slight divergence. But the point is, Elon Musk is a billionaire, right? So like wherever, if it was just purely about people making profit, then Elon Musk yeah. should be up at the top. But he's... I should, he's, I, should have, I should have scored him higher because now you, you run, like, like it's nothing wrong about him being a billionaire, but it is about... He's him, a bit like, of a snake. Talk, or, he's a snake. Like so, the way he talks up his share price, for instance, with the tweets yeah. and stuff. Well, um, I, my, just in general... It's probably true that my score is a little bit closer to reality. Right? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we'll eventually come around to it, so that's okay. That's okay. I have regrets. I have regrets <laughs> about my scoring. It's too late to get. I can change that one. That's um, that's outside the the one month uh, period. I'm okay, afraid well, the manual let, let doesn't lie. Let me put it this way: Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I give him one? What's 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 the reason for giving? I just think a there's a little one. bit about streamer culture in general, which is by its nature sort of a bit hyper capitalist it's a, I, like the analogy is a little bit like a stripper and dancing for people throwing money which is maybe not fair you know you could say the same things for patrons or whatever but there's just it's because of that live interactive element and you know yeah. that i think that's just a component of it so for that reason i'm just giving him slightly more than one which is two yeah. but uh, yeah maybe. Maybe if somebody scored us, we'd get it too. Chris. Yeah, we could. The... Yeah, I mean, they'd be wrong, but you know, they they could they could <laughs> score us there. So yeah. hey, we depend on whose coding scheme they're following. <laughs> um, yeah. But look, there's terrible people. I mean, we have Anna, uh, um, and Dasham one, right? Even though yes, they right, have a very did... lucrative uh podcast with uh, you know, I don't know. They get, however much they get per month, it's too much, but it's. It's like you know, yeah. tens of thousands of dollars. So mm, that's yep. it. It's not about I'll, money. It's about. I give. I give him a two purely based on the, um, on the um, thing. Hassan only got two point five on the grifting. So three point five for me. But yeah, so that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we didn't give like Hassan a five. Okay, right? We could have. No, um, no, we just don't. We just don't like him. <laughs> that's, that's different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's different. different. Um, okay, so moral grandstanding. This one, Matt. I'm gonna yeah. fill in okay. Hassan while yeah, we we're get... here. Uh, um, yeah. So, so Hassan we'll, gets we'll five. Talk about, we'll talk about this more fully in the supplementary materials. But I mean, 
it is what it says it is. It's not that hard to understand. But you know, many of our gurus um, cast themselves as these heroic figures with the highest motivations. Yeah, yep. struggling, struggling. David and Goliath um, really um, sacrificing themselves to make a better place. And I think that is a big part of the dodgy guru thing when they're actually not Jesus Christ combined with, I don't know, Che Guevara. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it, the, I'm the, just, the, I'm just the, looking at, mm. at this now though, Matt, but one thing is I also wouldn't score Anna and Dasha, for example, high on moral grandstanding. No, right? no, I'd score them <laughs> very low. But, but, but I would score Hassan Pika very high. Yeah, he's five. Right? He's five yeah. to me. Yeah. But, you know, but in the same way that, say, Jordan Peterson would score a five, I wouldn't score Joe Rogan high, but Brett and Eric Weinstein would definitely be scored very high. Maybe um, the, but I'd the, score Joe a little bit high because he does, like, often present himself and his friends as, you know, they're the only ones that care about democracy and, and so on. But, like, uh, yes. Yeah. So, okay. at the point, right. anyway. i give him a couple of points for that. Yeah, a couple of points for that. But, yeah, I, I think it's an Lex Friedman facet. Oh, God, <laughs> Lex Friedman. Yeah. Fine, yeah, he it, blows it, it off. It, <laughs> it'll actually be fun working. Yeah, it'll be fun working through our gurus and um, yeah, and Mike and yeah. the one, Chris, and the Weinstein's yeah. will be five and I like it. My, I like it. So, yeah. um, and, and this is how you. This is one way that you can inculcate that tremendous loyalty in your followers, like Jordan Peterson does, right? Yeah. Um, you know, um, so Destiny is interesting because he does have that incredible loyalty and in, uh, amongst his fans, but. It seems to be they were in love with this sort of analytical or angry debating thing yeah. or whatever what they perceive as authenticity or whatever. Um, not because he's like such a great person. Like he no. he listened to he listened to our and commented on our um our our coverage of him to his stream and he agreed with us that he is uh uh what what, what was the title? Um uh what was the title degenerate? of our episode? Debate he was King a degenerate. degenerate. Yeah. <laughs> He's a degenerate. Yeah. And like you said, like saying this is linked to the grifting, right? The, the reason why Hassan Piker is a bit higher on that is because he, he, he doesn't want to admit that he's, 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 he's basically uh, running a business, making money doing this kind of thing. He's presenting himself as having this noble cause. Selfless motivations, not, yeah. Selfless motivations. And that's not what Destiny does. He presents this as, this is my job. This is my business. Um, whatever his product is, however you want to define it, he very much sees himself as providing a product like Penn and Teller provide magic. So mm. I'm going to give I, him a one. So, yes. Yeah. I hope you... Uh, okay. So then we have our um, our little uh, binary markers just to indicate. So yeah. let's see. We'll mm -hmm. run through them quickly, then talk about his overall score. So mm -hmm. Monomania? No. Nope. Uh, Don't nope. think so. Shilling supplements? I think he did sell NFTs and stuff, but generally no. No. Um, Broicity? Does he have broicity? Hmm. Don't know. Um, it's a, I, kinda... I, I, I always, I mainly imagine it as the Joe Rogan type thing. Yeah, I am imagining that. But I mean, he's got, he's got the beat bro energy. Um, but is he? He's probably not really. I can. I'm going to give him a half for that. Um, charisma. Yeah. I think he's a charismatic person in an anti-charisma yep. way, but like in a, you know, yeah. there's there's still something there's different to ways, it. To, different ways to be charismatic, yeah. I mean, we give um, Anna and Dasha one, so just, again, it doesn't mean we we <laughs> necessarily are signing off on their charisma, but um, neologisms, neologisms. No, he doesn't do that. Yep. Strategic no. disclaimers. Uh... I know. I think he issues genuine disclaimers, like when he wants to be careful, yeah. right? Like, because if he yeah, says yeah. a disclaimer, he's going to then modulate what he is doing or saying. So he does use strategic, he does use disclaimers, but not really strategic disclaimers. Yeah. Right. That's fair. 
rebranding theories of other people as his own? No. Loquacious? Yes. Never he's admitting very, he's error. He's very loquacious. Yeah. Never admitting error. Yeah. No. Well, well, you know, he's pretty. <laughs> I mean, he he is, but I feel like if he's proven wrong, he'll. I feel like he would accept it if you could show, you know, oh, you said this, but actually the data shows that, and here's the yeah. source. I think he'd say, huh, okay, but because he, it was. But he still, but he still thinks he was wrong. Well, okay. he still thinks he's right to he kill should... the kid. Yeah, so let's give to him kill one. The kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he earned it with that take. Um, so yeah, look at that. Okay, so and it converted to a percentage score. For me, he gets twenty six which puts him down around the same level as Yuval Noah Harari um, or uh, Jerome Larnier. Um, actually, not a whole heap away from Brené Brown um, as well. So, yeah, that's that's low on my scale. For you, he scores even lower, 16%, um, which puts him... Let's see who's oh there's a seventeen. Who's that one? That is Noam Chomsky. Wow, he's close to Noam Chomsky. Um, but oh, that that also speaks to the fact that we said Noam Chomsky, whatever you think of him, was not um much of a secular guru. Anthony DeMello as well, the Jesuit who nobody will know, <laughs> and the um uh and who's this one? Seventeen point five. He, oh. A controversial Abram X Candy. Um, if we had moral ground standing in, Candy would get five, right? You'd get a five on that. Do you ever how upset people were that we didn't give Abram X Candy a big score? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I, I noticed a bit of a pattern where the, the right wingers get upset when we don't give a left winger a high uh -huh. score, and the, the leftists get upset when we give a liberal a low score. Um, it's almost like there's a pattern there. Almost, but just to note, Abraham X Candy, thirty-three percent for me, seventeen percent for you. <laughs> so just, just noting a difference. Almost twice, almost twice the value on my measures. That's because I'm always one up. But um, so yeah, almost okay, double. Well, but you know about proportions when you're talking about low, small. No, numbers. I don't know. I think about that. You don't need to worry about that. Um. So, mm -hmm. there we go. Destiny scored. He does not reach up into the high echelons of secular gurus, which is not that much of a surprise. But the comparison that will matter for many of his fans, uh, he scores much lower than Hassan. Hassan gets 66% for me. For you, he's at 53%. So, again, the mat, uh reduction bump there. But the point is, Destiny is less than half that for both of us. So uh, Hassan Pikard is doing more of the secular guru type dynamics. So sorry, the garometer does not lie. <laughs> that's that's what it says. Um, so there we go. Uh, and feel free to play along. Ascribe your own scores. Tell us. Hi, Destiny has scored 80% on your rankings. That's fine. Um, it's just wrong. You'll have calibrated things wrong. But you're free to be wrong as you like to be. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Make your own garometer. Make your own um, thing. Um, it's fun. Yeah, just yeah. don't call it the garometer or we'll come get you. <laughs> so, yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's true, it. Max. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, that was interesting, Matt. We are out of Destiny sphere. We're going in the academic world next. I think we are going to Peter Turchin. I think that's what we were due to go. Who's he? Uh, Who's he's, he a, he's, a, he's a historian that does like big data history. Um, I no. has written some interesting papers. Um, yeah, you know, streamer. Look, <laughs> Hassan <laughs> Piker, Yuval Noah yeah. Harari, Destiny. Next <laughs> pattern is academic. So. Yeah, we're yeah. we're out of streamers for one, and then it's Doctor K. Uh, oh, all right, Doctor K, Doctor K. Not me. I'm Doctor K as well, but I'm not that Doctor K. All right, Matt, mm. you did well. You did well. You're my favorite. You're my favorite, Doctor K. 
Yeah, I'm the real Dr. K. He's merely a Dr. K. Um, all right, so that's it. Destiny decoded, pushed into the drawer, filed away. Subreddits go <laughs> debate the episode as underscore as you see fit, and we'll check back in in about a month's time. <laughs> so, knock <laughs> yourselves out. All right, see you later. Bye.